That's my right. If I can't do that, then I cannot be a pastor. Oh, pastors don't want to, oh, you know, we can't say that. Who are we to judge? Yeah. Who are we to judge? Uh, you know, I, I mean, this thing, I'm telling you something, church. It's getting frightening out there. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at some of the popular pastors in America, and I'm going to call their names today. I don't want to do that. But they're very popular. They're well known. They've got mega churches like crazy, and they've got millions upon millions upon millions of dollars. And in interviews where they are publicly being interviewed by the, the, the host, a question is posed, for example, I'll give you two questions. Two popular questions that, that are asked. One, so Pastor X, what do you think about homosexuality? Is it a sin? And when they begin to answer, well, um, you see, I am not here to judge anybody. You know, I don't think it's a good thing, but, uh, you know, it's one, one, one host asked the pastor directly, do you believe gays will go to heaven? He said, of course they'll go to heaven. Which heaven, sister, which heaven? Which, which Bible did you go from? Gays are not going to heaven. Amen. Absolutely not. Absent. No practicing sinner can enter the kingdom of God. That's right. Whether it's gay or adultery. Amen. No practicing sinner. So this man never answered the question biblically. Here's the other question that baffles some of these pastors. Well, they're, they're public pastors. They don't want to lose their following. They don't want to lose their status and their power and their charm. But they will lose, they may lose salvation. <laughs> If, if they have it, I don't know. That's not for me to judge. So, um, Pastor, what about Islam? They worship Allah. Oh, it's okay. It doesn't matter which, you know, it's the same God we all worship. Yes. Well, uh, if that is so, then what this, this statement is kind of foolish. Yes. Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Wow, this is the real thing. This is not the gods of Egypt, though. He is the real God, right? Amen. So what happens here in the book of Exodus is a remarkable story. God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, will reveal his name to his people by his proper name, Yahweh, Y-H-V-H, the Tetragrammaton, Y-H-V-H, some say Y-H-W-H, when they do argue that Hebrew stuff, but he reveals his name, and we say Yahweh, Yahweh, or Yehovah. Okay, not a big deal. We don't say Allah. Absolutely not. But I'll get there in a short while, if, if time permits. So he reveals himself to Moses and says, goes, tells Moses, you go tell them who I am. And I want to take them out of the bondage to the false gods. And I will show you, Moses, and I'll show all the people and the Egyptians that their gods are no match for me. The real thing. Now, watch this. If all gods were equal, why would God, Yahweh, have to do this? Why couldn't he say, Moses, it's okay. You know, you guys stay there. I'll deliver you there, right there in Egypt. And you can serve their gods. No. He didn't do that. No. Are you with me, church? Yes. Very simple. Let's go to Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12. Very, very simple. So, what ensues is a battle between Moses and Pharaoh. But actually, what ensues is more than that. It's a battle between the gods. A battle between the God of Moses, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the gods of Egypt. Who is equal to the wind? <laughs> well, obviously, the one who will win is the one who is the real God, right? Okay. So Exodus 12, it's time for the last play, you know. So Exodus 12, verse 12, here's what the God, the God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob says. Moses, listen up well. I, who is speaking, the God of, yeah, Yahweh is speaking, right? I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Who is doing the striking? Who is doing the killing? Yeah. The Yahweh, right? All the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, against all the gods of Egypt, I, Yehovah, I, Adonai, will execute judgment. Why? Because I am the Lord. Amen. I am Yehovah. Amen. I am the true God of the universe. Amen. Well, that's kind of, to me, that's not a question. I don't need any big theology. I don't need to have a doctor of divinity degree. I don't need to know the Hebrew and the Greek. Not simple. To me, that's common sense. If people have common sense these days, but that's lacking now. We kind of conflate everything and make it all syrupy and nonsensical. Uh, you know, it's, you don't have to. You don't have to say that because you offended me. But brother, I would rather offend you so you can get saved. Amen. 
they're not offending you and you go to hell. How about that one? Does that make sense? Yes. That's my job. My job is not to offend you. My job is to proclaim Christ. But that proclamation will offend you. But in that offense, maybe you'll wake up one morning and say, you know what? That pastor was right. I need to change. Hallelujah. I wonder how many uh, people will end up in hell and when they're in hell, wish, I wish my Christian friend had really told me the truth. I wish he hadn't messed with me. I said, well, it's okay, brother. Whatever you want to believe. Now he is in heaven and I'm in hell. Are you with me here, church? Yes. Boy, this is a terrible thing. I mean, a terrible thing. So, so God, the God, the God, makes it very clear. What was he going to do? He was going to judge the gods of Egypt. And who would win? Well, we know the answer. All right, I don't need to go any more Exodus because that story we'll talk some more next month as we get to Passover. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 44. Isaiah chapter 44. We're moving forward rapidly here. In Isaiah chapter 44, the, our God is very clear to Isaiah. Amen? Amen. I go to verse 6. The God, the God of the Bible speaks. Thank you. Verse 6. Thus says the Lord. Notice capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Yeah. Always remember, everybody out there, anytime in the English Bible you see this, this means a reference to YHVH. Amen. The God, not Allah. The one true God. His name is Yahweh, YHVH. Thus says Yahweh, the King of Israel, and His Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. Besides Jehovah, there is no God. Besides Jehovah, there is no God. Besides Jehovah, there is no God. So you're going to have to make a choice. Either you believe the Bible, or you believe... Worldly theology. Worldly theology will lead you into the arms of the worldly ruler. His name is Satan. <laughs> Biblical theology will lead you to the arms of the great God, Jehovah. Amen. And of course, into the arms of Christ our Savior. Amen? Amen. So it's very clear. Uh, verse 7 and verse 8. Who can proclaim as I do? Now God is challenging the other gods. He says, okay, so the other gods are gods? Well, who can proclaim as I do? Who can proclaim as I do? Then let him declare it. Mm. And set it in order for me. Mm. <laughs> the other gods of Babylon and Assyria and all the other gods, if they are God, then do something and prove it to me. Yeah. Why didn't the Egyptian God stop the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Yeah. If, if they were God, equal in authority with our God, couldn't they say, no way, you're not doing this? Exactly. No, they're not God. There is no God but God. You know, by the way, do you know the Muslims have a saying, there is no God but Allah? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Funny that they say that there is no God but Allah. Wrong. There is no God but Jehovah. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. We Christians are afraid to say that. No. But the Muslims say very openly, there is no God but Allah. No. Wrong theology. No. Who can proclaim as I do? Then let him declare it and set it in order for me. Since I appointed the ancient people and the things that are coming and shall come, let them show these to them. Amen. My God, the God of the Bible, Jehovah says, I declare the end from the beginning. I declare the ancient things, I declare the future things, and I will bring them to pass. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Yes, hallelujah. And people come with a family, family, wishy washy nonsense. He's talking to me. You must be kidding me. I, I go by the word of God. I go by the Bible. Why do we, why has the world come to the point where people who are very strong in their beliefs over the Bible are now seen as dangers? We are oh, fanatics. Well, you're a fanatic about the foolishness you believe. What, what, what's the logic? So you have the right to believe your nonsense and I don't have the right to believe my sense? You have a right to be liberal. I don't have the right to be conservative. You have the right to believe in a false religion, and I don't have the right to believe in a true religion. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know what it is. Ah, I get it. The, 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 the Holy Spirit in me troubles your demonic spirits. Yeah. 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 That's your problem. You, you, you see, in my presence, when the Holy Spirit begins to speak, your demonic spirits get sh shook up. And, he's like, yeah. and you begin to get mad and angry and messed up. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord, brother. That's what's happening to you. That's exactly what's happening to you. 
So if you are fighting not me, you are fighting the Holy Spirit yeah. in me. Wait, who is God? You can't win. You're, gonna, you're not going to win an argument with any man or woman of God who stands by the word of God. Am I, am I right? You can never win an argument with any man or woman who stands by the word of God. Because all that says, thus saith the Lord God. Amen? Grace is the only name. So, Isaiah is very clear. Verse 8. Do not fear. Do not fear. Do not be afraid. Have I... Well, do not fear. Do not be afraid. Have I not told you from that time and declared it to you? For you are my witnesses. And I like the next part of the verse. Is there a God besides me? No. Isaiah, tell the people. Is there a God besides me? No. Indeed, there is no other up. I know not one. Hallelujah. Amen. God is being funny. I, I don't know anyone. Um, remember when Pharaoh, when Moses went to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh, <laughs> Moses said, uh, Hello, Pharaoh. You think you're king and God? Yahweh said, Set my people free. And Pharaoh said, Who is Yahweh? I don't know him. I don't know him and I don't care. And in any case, I, will, I refuse. <laughs> and what does Yahweh say? Now show him who is God. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Look, people, there's no hatred in my heart for anybody. I want you to be saved. It's, God wants you to be saved too. Amen. But well, my job is to tell you the truth. In love. That doesn't make me a monster. No. The real monster is the one the devil is putting up to you. And that's the monster who will take you to him, with him in hell. Amen. Uh, the book of Daniel, time doesn't permit, so I will not. Remember Daniel and Nebuchadnezzar? Yes. I will not go there. Remember that story? So Daniel was uh, now um, a servant in the house of Nebuchadnezzar. They were slaves because the Babylonians had conquered Judah, right? Mm -hmm. And he had a dream. And, and who, who can interpret it? Daniel. Yeah. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Yeah. And, and who saved them? And the king, when he saw that dear God, remember they said, uh, they, they said to him, I don't want to go there. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Sir, you refuse to bow down to my gods? Yes. You don't bow to my image? Yep. Well, let me see if your God can save you from my hand. Yeah. That was the challenge. He says, yeah. Nebuchadnezzar says, Let me see if your God, your God, I, whom I don't believe in, let me see if he can save you from my fiery hands. Hmm. Right? Yeah. You know the rest of the story? Yeah. Right. So the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they are put in a fiery furnace. Even the people who held them were burnt up. And all of a sudden, Nebuchadnezzar says, um, Didn't we put three men inside there? I see four. <laughs> and the fourth is like unto the Son of God. Yeah. Not that he knew who Jesus was. And they came out. And then he passed a decree. He says, let nobody in my kingdom say one word against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because he's the greatest of them all. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not Allah. I'm sorry. It's not Krishna. It's not Ram. No, you know, I've been to India many times. Look, I understand what you believe. I understand why you believe it. But you're wrong. Ram cannot save you. And Krishna cannot save you. And, and, and whatever you need, and, and Allah cannot save you. Do we understand? There is one name we're coming to, and that name alone. One person and one name, and that's Christ. Amen. We live in a world today where it's, there is, it, is a, it is kind of trendy. You know, trendy, that's my word. Trendy to be multicultural, to be pluralistic, to be relativistic. Those are very nice sociological, psychological, philosophical terminologies. Oh, yeah. Well, let me tell you something. All your terminologies cannot put you in right terms with God. Amen. You need Christ. Amen. Only Christ. Somebody say, only Christ. Only Christ. Say it again, only Christ. Only Christ. Does that make me dogmatic? I suppose it does. Does that make me doctrinaire? I suppose it does. Does it make me right? You bet it does. But I'm not saying that against you. I'm saying that to help you. Because the world is filled with nonsense, multiculturalism, pluralism, relativism, and all the other isms will take you nowhere but into Satan's lair. Yeah. But Christ will take you to the kingdom of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise yeah. the Holy Name. So now let's go from the Old Testament to the New. Let's go from the Old Testament to the New. And what we see, so we already have cleared the air that 
YHVH, Adonai, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel, He alone is God. Am I clear? Yes. So Allah is not God. That's right. He may be a God. A God in the eyes of many. But He's not the God. He's not sovereign Lord of the universe. Amen? Amen. And the Quran does not agree with the Holy Bible. Let's be very clear. Let me make this observation again for those who don't know it. The Quran is very clear. Quran says that they, meaning the Christians, say, mocking the Christians, that God has a son. And you know what the Quran says after that? Let them know Allah has no son. <laughs> well, they're right. Allah has no son because Allah doesn't exist. My Bible says that God has a son, God the Father has a son. That's in the biological way. Amen? And my Bible, and then the, the Quran says, and that that's Isa, this claim to believe in as well. No offense, no love lost. I love everybody. But listen, loving you doesn't mean I agree with you. You're wrong, you're wrong. All right? Simple logic. Then Isa was not crucified. Then Isa did not resurrect. My Bible says that Jesus, Yeshua, was crucified yes. and he was resurrected yes. and he is ascended and he is sitting at the right hand of God the Father where did he come up in glory and power to rule the universe. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So don't give me your baloney because I don't, I don't eat baloney. No. So don't, don't give me that nonsense. I believe God's word. My job, I will never be popular and never have wished to be popular. But in the kingdom of God, I'll be very popular. <laughs> because the whole world will have to follow Christ. Amen. Not Allah. Christ and Christ alone. Love, yeah, then love will make sense. You can't love in a multicultural society and mean that now we must believe everybody. No, we can't believe everybody. We can't believe the Bible and the Quran at the same time. One is wrong and the other is right. So which is wrong and which is right? Well, if you're a Christian, the Quran is wrong and the Holy Bible is right. Who am I to say that? I'm a servant of the Most High God. Amen. Hallelujah. I say and I say with the authority of the Holy Spirit in my life. Glory to God. And I hate no one. I will love you until you die. Yes. Amen? Amen. Now, if you choose to go to hell, that's your choice. I didn't do this for you. I told you what God said. Amen. Amen. So, what do we see about this, this um, salvation issue, life eternal? Well, we go to the book of John. New Testament, the book of John, remarkable book. Remarkable book. Thank you, Lord, for John. John chapter 1, I'll begin at verse 1, and so I get the whole full, full thinking here. In the beginning was the Word. Now watch this carefully. This is the NKJV. Everybody now pay, pay attention now. In the beginning, in the beginning, so there was, so to speak, from a human perspective, in the beginning was the Word. From a God perspective, there is no beginning, right? You know that, because there is no beginning. But from the human perspective, in the beginning was the Word. Watch the logic. Watch the flow. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The Word was in the beginning. The Word is with, preposition with. And the Word was. That seems very contradictory, right? Yeah. Until you understand what it's talking about. So let's continue reading. He was in the beginning with God. He. He. Who, who is a He? Now those of you who are Christians and know the Bible, you know this He refers to who? Christ. To Christ. Christ. Jesus, Yeshua. He, Yeshua, was in the beginning with God. He didn't show up like Muhammad, you know. <laughs> Muhammad was not in the beginning with God. Are you with me? Confucius was not in the beginning with God. Buddha was not in the beginning with God. And, and you, you and I were not in the beginning with God. Amen? Amen? But He, Yeshua, Jesus, was in the beginning with God. Which God? God the Father. Amen. Because they are God. Amen? One God. Muslims and others accuse us of believing, of believing in three gods. We do not believe in three gods. We believe in one God who exists as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. But you can't explain that. Of course I cannot. No, I don't need to. There are many things you can't explain either. But you believe, right? Okay. Verse 3. Watch this. All things were made through Him. All things were made through Him. Through who Him? 
Jesus. And without him, yes, Jesus, nothing was made that was made. Wow. All things, all things. So who is the creator? Yeshua. Who is the creator? Yeshua, Jesus. All things were made through him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. Wow. Wow. Jesus is not a come lately kind of person. He is always. He is I am that I am. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. The very same name. Remember when he had the Pharisees? <laughs> I am that I am. Yeah. Yeah. He is God. Yeah. The Muslims say he is not. I say to you on the authority of the word of God that Jesus is God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And yet, how sad it is. Some of you Christian pastors out there can't tell people the truth. You want to work together for world peace. You cannot have world peace unless your doctrines are agree. Either Jesus is or is not God. If he is God, then there is no collaboration with true Christians and any other religion. Amen. Amen. If he is not God, then you can collaborate all you want. I will not be part of your collaboration. I believe in Christ. I will not be part of salvation. Not because I want to believe that, but because the Bible reveals it to me. Amen? Amen. So we continue. Verse 4, in him was life. This is beautiful. In him was life. And the light was the light of man. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not comprehend it. In him was life. Him, in him, Jesus was life. And the light was the light of man. Christ came into the darkness of the world. Amen? And the darkness did not comprehend it. Verse 6, I want to continue here very quickly. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The man came for a witness to bear the witness of the light. This is not John the Road. This is John the Baptist now, okay? Another John. That all through him I believe. He, in verse 8, John, was not that light, but was sent to be a witness of that light. That was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. So you want the real light of God in your life? What name? Jesus. What's the name? Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Or Yeshua. That's the name, right? Yes. Not Muhammad. Not Buddha. Not me. Not you. Not this big celebrity. Not this great politician. Not this big CEO. Not the Pope. No. We are just little people. We are nothing. We are nothing at all. We are just dust of the earth. Sometimes we don't we need to dust ourselves off and realize we are dust of the earth. Alright. Okay. Verse 10, he was in the world, and the world was made through him. Wow, the world was made through whom? Christ. And the world did not know him. You know what's funny? The world still doesn't know him. He came to his own, that's the Jewish people, and his own did not receive him. His own people rejected him. Now, the next part is critical. But as many as received him... Watch. As many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God. Yeah. 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 Beloved, that's really, that's really simple. You know, let me, let me explain something to you. I have this bottle here. It's my bottle. I carry my water inside. Let's suppose this was made of gold. It's not. Okay. There's a cheap stainless steel bottle, but it works for me. So let's assume this is life. Right? Now what, what, look at the scripture. As many as receive him. Receive. Receive. Hmm. For you to receive something, somebody has to give something. Are you looking out? Yes. So, if I'm holding this out and I said I want to give this to somebody, somebody has to get up and come here to receive it. Right. If you don't receive it, you can't have it even though I'm giving it. Are you with me? Yes. So salvation is a gift to be received. Amen. Salvation is not a gift to be earned. Amen. If you earn salvation, then it's no longer a gift. Are you with me? Yes. If I earn something, it's not a gift. Let me be clear. If I work for you for eight hours, for the day or whatever length of time, and you pay me a wage of $100, you didn't give me $100, okay? Did you get it? Yes. Don't say thank you for giving me. No, no, no. I gave you my labor in exchange. Right? There was an exchange. I gave you labor. 
I traded you. I traded your labor for money. All right. I traded my labor ten hours, and you traded your financial resources. Am I making sense? Yes. So the Bible says, as many as received him, who him? Christ. As many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name. Hold on. Man, this is this this is the amazing sermon right here. Let's dissect. Let's dissect, bisect, and you know, whatever. As many as receive. So you can't have salvation until you receive Christ. Amen. Am I clear? Yes. Or rather, is the Bible clear? To them he gave the right. So when a lost person, a sinner, whether you're Hindu, Muslim, whatever you are, it doesn't matter. When a human being receives the gift, then God the Father gives the person the right to become children of God. Now, it says to become children of God. Hmm. The word become implies what? That at one time you were not. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. If you decided that, you know, you're walking down the street and you saw this um, little child on the street, two years old or three years old walking, and there are no parents. The child does not belong to you, right? The rest of us. But you decide, I want this child. You give the child the right. You become the parent, and the child becomes your child. The children of God. The child is now your. That child is now your child. The children of God. But prior to you adopting the child, the child was the child of somebody else. So spiritually speaking, are you with me now? Yes. Sorry, no, no, that's so hard on me. <laughs> I'm teaching you the word of God. Very simple. He gave the right to become children of God. So if you get the right from God to become the child of God when you receive Christ, who were you before that? Yeah, you were a child of Satan. Yeah, yes. Glory, say, wow. Yeah, to become that's children it. of God. Yeah. To those who believe in his name and the name of jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to the glory of god nowhere in scripture says that the name of muhammad muhammad is dead and he's buried he did not ascend on a horse to heaven as they claim he went to Jerusalem, he ascended the horse to heaven. No, absolutely no, my friends. I'm sorry. You could believe it. You can you could believe it until you turn red, blue, black, or brown. Your belief doesn't change historical fact. He's dead and buried. Christ ascended. And as Christ ascended, the disciples looked up and the angels said, What? This same Jesus. This same Jesus. This same Jesus, whom you see ascending up, shall so come in like manner as you see him go. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Most High, Jesus. Glory to God. Jesus. Yeah. That makes me a fanatic. You can call me whatever you want. You can call me fanatic, dogmatic, a lunatic. I don't care. A tick. Whatever you want to call me. One thing I know. I will be with the Lord in the kingdom of God. Yes. Where will you be? Amen. Where will you be? The only two places possible. The lake of fire or the kingdom of God. You normally say hell or heaven. Okay. Where will you be? If you don't receive Christ, if you don't receive Christ, you can't be in the kingdom of God. So all you pastors out there, and all you Christians out there who are deceiving people, telling them, um, it doesn't really matter if you accept Jesus. You know, once you live a good life. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. A good life? I thought salvation was a gift. Mm -hmm. So wait a minute. Yeah. Is salvation by grace or by good works now? <laughs> and yes, what's a good life? <laughs> what's a good life? Who defines good? <coughs> Your definition of good? My definition of good. Islam's definition of good? Buddhist definition of good. Mm -hmm. The problem with the word good, because we live in a pluralistic culture, yeah. what is good? No has no sense. But God is good. Only Amen? Only God. All right, only God. Boy, this, is the Bible exciting or what? Yes. All right, we continue. I, I, I want to move on. Uh, the rest, verse 30. One last verse in chapter 1. One last verse. Who were born out of blood. Now watch this. This is a whole sermon right here. Who Bible study. 
who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And hold on. Boy, this is a powerful message. This is so. Yes. So, when you receive Christ, you become the children of God. Now, watch. Using the logic, the children of God. So now you were born, but not of blood. When a man and a wife, his wife, have a child that's born of blood, right? Yes. That's a blood child. Mm -hmm. But if you adopt a child, that's not a blood child. Right. Ah. So spiritually the same thing. So you were once not of God. You were born in the flesh. But now, because you have received Christ, you are no longer considered one born of the will of the flesh. Husband and wife, sperm cut and egg. Nor of the will of man. It wasn't man's choice, but of God. Amen. God has called you now. You have received Christ. The day you receive Christ, when you receive Christ the Son, then you receive Christ the Father. Amen. If you will not worship the Son, you don't know the Father. Why do people get it? You cannot know God the Father until you know God the Son. Amen. Do you know that's a scripture? Yes. You know, we'll go there. We'll go there. Oh, some people say, well, you know, it's okay. You don't have to know Jesus once you know God. <laughs> and that's how they get to the other thing. And no, 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 that's not what the Bible says. Decide today, friends who are listening to me, will you believe the Bible or will you believe popular theology? Bible. If you believe popular theology, then who is your God? <laughs> and how can you be sure you are saved? <laughs> if I believe the Bible, I know who is my God, I know who is my Savior, and I know I am saved. I know I have life eternal dwelling in me. How do I know that? Because I have received the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is a down payment of the guarantee of life eternal. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't know if no buts, no ands, no maybes. Well, possibly. No, no. It is. Is that dogmatic? That's very dogmatic. Because the Bible says it. I think the Bible is very dogmatic. You get my drift? Wow. Okay, let's go to chapter 5. Chapter 5, we're going to move on here. Time is good. No, let's go to chapter 3 first. Chapter 3, verse 36. Chapter 3, verse 36. John chapter 3. Here we go. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. It's in the Holy Bible. He who believes in the Son, the Son, Allah says, the Quran says, God has no Son. The Bible says, he who believes in the Son has everlasting life. Amen. If you don't believe in Jesus Christ, the Son, you don't have everlasting life. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life. And he who does not... Whoa, this is very mean, John. How could you just say that? Uh, that, is, that is terrible. John, that is really terrible. He who does not believe the Son shall not see life. But, 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 but the wrath of God abides on him. Beloved, you don't want the wrath of God abiding. You don't want the wrath of God abiding. That's why Christ came and he took God's wrath on him. Yes. Christ came to the earth. He took the wrath of God, which was for mankind. He took the God's wrath on mankind upon himself. So that when we receive Christ indirectly, no, well, directly, the wrath of God is satisfied. The wrath of God has been paid for. So when we receive Christ, we are saved. And we don't have to receive the wrath of God. But if you reject the Son of God, here it is. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life. And he who does not believe the Son does not but shall not see light. But the wrath of God abides on him. Do I need to get any clearer? Does the, is the Bible clear or not? Yes. And yet, beloved, there are people out there, again, the popular pastors, the mega pastors, the big, the big honchos, who want you to believe it's all fine. That the God of Israel is the God of the, the Allah, the God of the Muslims, mm -hmm. is the God of the Hebrews and the God of the Christians. Mm -hmm. And my Bible says no. no. I choose to believe my Bible. Not because I'm superior to you. I am not better than you. I am not greater than you. I am not smarter than you. But I receive and believe this book. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? With all my heart. Amen. With all my heart. Do you believe this book with all your heart? Yes. yes. Okay, let's go to chapter 5. I'm going to close up. Um, two more scriptures and we're done because this is a very big subject but it was very it is very important that we clearly spell it out for the world to understand so John chapter 5 
John chapter 5, verse 21, verse 21, verse 21. For as the Father raises the dead, for as the Father raises the dead, the Father, who's the Father? So the Quran says, Allah has no son. So do, do you know in, in, in Islam, you don't call God Father? Did you know that? There is no relationship with God, God as Father. He's a distant being. We say, Abba, Father. Hallelujah. There is a relationship. Yes. When the disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. How did he say? What did he say? Our Father. Father. Yes. A term of endearment yes. and affection and love. Yes. There's a relationship bond, right? So, who as the Father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the Son gives life to whomever He will. Hallelujah. Well, the Son, who's the Son? Yeshua. Who is the Son? Yeshua. Who is the Son? Yeshua. So if the Son can give life, then He can be that ordinary human being. He has to be God. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Wow. The Father is the dead, the Son is the dead. Amen. He's God. God the Son. Muhammad can't do that. Moses can't do that. Abraham can't do that. Elijah can't do that. All the gods of, of, of the Hindus can't do that. Confucius cannot do that. Buddha cannot do that. All the animal gods and primitive gods in all the parts of the world, wherever country people from, they can't do that. When you're dead, you're dead. Christ said, I, have, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. Wow. So, guess what? I don't fear death. I don't have to go to a, a cosmetic factory and redo my face. <laughs> You're fine. Uh, uh, thank you. I have a pretty good face, praise the Lord. You know, I don't need any of that. You know, as a matter of fact, when you're a real believer in the Lord, then you welcome it. Hey, take me home, Lord, take me home. Because this is not my home. I want to go home. I want to really want to go home. Be with the Lord and then come back with Him and rule the world. Amen? So, uh, verse 22, for the Father judges no one. Now watch this, watch this. This is, I'm not going to finish. I know I'm saying I'm going to finish, but I don't want to finish. I don't want to finish this. For the Father judges no one. Wait a minute. Who is the Father again? God the Father? Adonai? The one we saw, we saw the, uh, the Old Testament? Yahweh? For the Father judges no one, but, 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 has committed all judgment to the Son. Hallelujah. Wait a minute. Wow. Who's the son again? Yeshua. Not Muhammad. Not Allah. To the son. Christ will be the judge of all. At the beam of seat of Christ, who do you think is judging? Christ is judging. Hallelujah. Let's go on. Verse 23. This is the key verse I want. That all, watch this. Don't miss this one. That all should honor the son just as they honor the father. That all, everybody say all, all, should honor whom? The Son. Everybody say the Son. The Son. That all should honor whom? The Son. Whom? The Son. And who is that? Yeshua. Amen. Just as they honor the Father. So hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. So when a Muslim comes to me and says, well, um, you know, I, I, I believe in God. I say, that, that's good. And what's the name of your God? Allah. That's, okay, that's good. Do you believe in Jesus? Oh, well, I believe in Jesus. Do you believe in the, the Jesus who died for you? Oh, no, no, no. He didn't die for me. Oh, well, then you don't believe God. Oh, yes, I do. No, you don't. Because. Because. Are you getting it now? Yes. No love loss. I don't hate you. I love you. I can sit and drink a cup of coffee with you. I can give you a hug. It's okay. No hatred. I'm not going to take a gun and kill you because of that. Maybe you will kill me, but I will not kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Are you with me? <laughs> it's okay. Don't, 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 don't fight me. I'm just telling you what I believe. I have a right to, to say what I believe. You have a right to say what you believe too. We don't have to come to arms and, and start a boxing match. No. If you don't honor the son, you can't honor the father. Look, look. Here it is. I didn't make this up. He who does not honor the son does not honor the father who sent him. 
Why is it that people read these things and don't see them? Because you don't, they don't want to see it. We want to be trendy and popular. We want to be approved by the world. We want the world to give us accolades. I want nothing from this world because this world has nothing to offer me. Amen. 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 So brothers and sisters, you know, I, time doesn't permit. I think they did the book of Acts where Paul preaches what? One name. Let's go to one verse in the book of Acts and I'm done. I, I promise you I'm done now. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Acts chapter 4, one verse. This is a powerful message. Acts chapter 4. So Peter and uh, preaching, and Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit, right? Yeah. I want to begin in verse 10. Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit. Verse 10, let it be known to you. Let it be known to you. And all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Whose name? Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's very specific. Yeshua HaMashiach of Nazareth, whom you crucified. So Peter makes it very clear that this Jesus was crucified, whom God raised from the dead. Hallelujah. By him, this man, they just heal a man. The Jews were very upset that the man was healed. And he was healed by the name of Jesus. Oh no, don't do that. That's a bad thing to do. By him, this man stands before you whole. Now what's the next part of the verse? Watch. Watch. This, verse 11, is the stone. This is the stone which was rejected by your builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Verse 12. This is it. This is it. Nor is there salvation. Nor is there salvation, are we getting that verse or no? Nor is there salvation in any other name, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. There is salvation in no other name but the name of Jesus. There is salvation in no other name but the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. The only name. The only name. Does that make me a bad person for believing in Christ? No, my brothers and sisters. John 20. We started there. Let's go back there and close the circle. That's not a new scripture. We started there. I want to go back there and close the circle. John 20. John 20, verse 30 and verse 31. We had a scripture reading. John, I mean, Thomas, sorry, Thomas, who didn't believe. And Christ said, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Because you have seen me, you have believed. But blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Amen. And now in 30, verse 30, these Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written, here we go. But these are written, why church? But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Messiah. He is the promised one. He is the anointed one. And that the Son of God, the Son of God. Yes. Listen up, Muslims. I'm sorry, please. Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. By God's, the Father's divine decree. He is the Son of God. And that by believing, you may have life in His name. Amen. Amen. What's the name for salvation? <coughs> so today, beloved, what, what have we done? We have proven from the Word of God very clearly that Yahweh, the, the name of God is Yah Yehovah, Y-H-P-H. He alone is God. You could say we have different names. No, no. Until you identify the God, but the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? As the God of Israel, then you don't know who God is. Yeah. And once you know who God is, then you have to agree with the Holy Bible. And the Holy Bible supersedes all of the books. That's right. Mm -hmm. So the Quran, which came later, the Quran comes what, 500, 600 years later. That, that is not the word of God. It is the word, but not the word of the God of the Bible. Are you with me, church? Yes. All the other books in the world may be good, may be great, may be wonderful, but they do not supersede or substitute for the Holy Bible. So my Bible says very simply that Christ and Christ only is the way to salvation. Christ said very clearly in John chapter 14 verse 6, I am, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. He didn't say, as Oprah Winfrey would have you believe, 
I am one of the many ways. You know, God has many ways. And she is so suave and sweet. And people are so dumb. I am the way. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. I am the gate. I am the door. How many things have we said? I am the shepherd. We've got to come through Christ. Any other means of getting to the Father will not work. All of you listening today, let it be very clear. No matter what the world says, what the world does, all the popes get together, and all the pastors get together, and all the mega pastors get together, and they enjoy and celebrate, get good times together, and then they tell you that it's all good. We're all worshiping the same God. My Bible says no. Besides Yahweh, there is no God. And besides Jesus, there is no other path to salvation. Amen. 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 And amen. God bless you everyone. Hallelujah.